Hey, what's going on, comic fans? Mr. Q Comics back with some more show and tell. All right, today I have my first books I picked up in 2023. Uh, decent stack here. Books I picked up from uh, a couple from my local antique shop. And then pretty much everything else is uh, three or four shops in um, central and western New York. So I travel out to New York quite a bit for work. Uh, my company, one of our offices is out in Buffalo. So I am oftentimes in the anywhere from Albany all the way out through Buffalo kind of driving the same route and I found a handful of shops that I like to hit up while I'm out there. There's a bunch in the area, but some of them are a little off the beaten path. So anyways, I was able to pick up uh, some decent books while I was out there. But before we dive into it, guys, if you are a fan of haul videos, please do me a favor, go down below, hit the like button, hit subscribe. Let me know what you think about these pickups. All right, first we will start with two slabs I grabbed from my local antique shop. This is a seller I've bought from. He sells comics, typical antique mall dealer. Everything is way overpriced and you kind of got to negotiate to an affordable price. He sells comics, but he sells a lot of other stuff as well. So um, he had some slabs in one of his cases, which he typically doesn't have. So I was able to work out a deal on these two. First, we've got Marvel Spotlight. Number two from 1972, first appearance in Origin of Werewolf by Night with a Neil Adams cover. 6.0 off-white pages. I think he had a 7 or a 7.5 he was trying to talk me into, but I thought his price point on that one was too high. And uh, I thought this one was uh, the uh, you know better price copy. So I don't know that this has any chance of being a, a bump up, but for the price, I thought it was worth it. I paid 300 bucks for that. And this copy of ASM 194, this is a 7.0 white pages. Now... I wanted this one just because uh, this one looks like it does have a shot at being cleaned and pressed with a significant grade bump. This not, it's probably a couple small spine ticks, but it's got a lot of the, the thumb print indents, non-color breaking bends slash creases. So I thought this one had a pretty fair amount of pressable defects. So bundling up with the other one, I thought it was worth it. I think he was asking 400 or 450 bucks for the pair and uh, he took 300 cash. So just again, he's a typical antique mall dealer. You'll walk in and go, these books are overpriced. But if you pick up the phone and call the guy, he's usually pretty flexible and he, he'll always like leave his card in his cases. So uh, I thought that was a good deal. I got to keep checking back. He said he had more slabs, but I haven't seen anything new show up there um, this year anyway. So that is it for the local pickups. And then we were out in New York. This was a shop I had not hit up. I totally forgot the name of the shop. Uh, I think it was in New York as I was headed out there, but I can't remember. It's a shop I saw Mike at Lunch Money Comics highlight one time. Uh, a ton of toys and stuff like that, but he did have a bunch of books. His pricing was kind of weird. It was just all the back issues were like, this is the $5 section and then this is the dollar section. So... And there was a ton. I, I couldn't spend too much time there. Uh, but I picked up a few books. First, we've got ASM 302. I'm a sucker for McFarlane. If you watch any of my videos, you know I'm constantly buying McFarlane. It's my favorite favorite artist. Um, new sand copy. Uh, not in the best of shape. I can't remember what this is. Probably in the VF range. Uh, I think I got it for 7 bucks, which is probably, honestly, about what it's worth. But... Uh, I was trying to bundle up at least a few books. I was having trouble finding too much stuff just because I didn't have the time to dig. Uh, next, we have got Wonder Woman Rebirth. This is the, I think this is the cover B, our germ cover. Not an expensive book. I think this was five bucks for a near mint copy. It used to be, you know, a lot pricier when this, uh, when Rebirth uh, started for DC back in whatever it was, 2016. But still, if you're a fan of cover art, if you're a fan of art germ, this is a cool one that's very affordable. Next, again, these are books. I, I don't know why, but I'm suckers for these. We've got Francis, Brother of the Universe, number one from Marvel 1980. <laughs> they have this, the Mother Teresa book, and the Pope John Paul II book. And I'm always suckers for finding them. They're just kind of obscure, random titles to me. You know, uh, I come from a Catholic family. I grew up, you know, went to Sunday school and all of that. So I think that's that's the appeal for me. And this was a pretty sharp copy, probably the VF near mint range. Every time I find these, they're really beat up and stuffed in dollar bins. So I was happy to find a solid copy to replace my beat up copy. All right, next we have got, I thought this was an affordable copy. I've been trying not to 
pick up any of the kind of, I'll call them modern, the spec books, you know, that, that we've seen so much of, particularly through COVID. But um, this is a cool gym we cover. We've got Batman 609. First appearance of uh, Hush, of Thomas Elliott. Uh, it becomes Hush. So I grabbed it because it's, an, it's a really sharp copy. Might be worth sending off to be graded. This was like 25 bucks, uh, which I thought was fair. I know this book was hot for, you know, one week anyways. I, I don't know. I'm sure there's spec related to the James Gunn universe uh, for the DCU, but I honestly can't recall. But I thought 25 bucks was pretty affordable for a sharp copy. Most of the time we see this, it's priced much higher than that. And finally, a book for the PC. Again, I gotta grab my McFarlane. They had a nice copy of ASM 301. He had a 316 than I wanted. Um, we had a price like it was much higher grade when you flipped it over. There was a huge crease like top to bottom on the back cover. But this I thought was pretty sharp. I think I put it in kind of like a high VF newsstand copy, which I didn't have. And it doesn't have that yellowing that you see so often on this book. It gets that tanning all the way around the edge because of the completely white background. So I thought it was a pretty sharp copy and pretty decent price. Uh, I think it worked out when I bundled it with everything to like 84 bucks, which I thought was... Uh, a pretty good price for that book, which is typically pretty expensive. Tough to find in hard grade, in high grade. All right, next is we are working our way out west, and I'm not even sure if these are the same trip. This is a shop in Schenectady. I've hit it up a couple of times. It's I think it's called Electric City Comics. Uh, really small shop. Um, they have some good books in there. I just found their prices to be uh, pretty high. He had a bunch of Nice keys in the case that I was interested in. You know, he had an FF48, he had a giant size X-Men, but like they're all raw. The giant size X-Men, I can't even remember what he had on it. it. Six or eight grand, something like that, which I thought was just, you know, not, <laughs> not today's pricing. It was kind of like mid-COVID pricing. So I kind of looked those over. I asked about bundling. They were very quick uh, to, to kind of, cut me off that there is no negotiating whatsoever. Now, I think the other times I've been there, I was dealing with the owner and he was flexible on pricing, but uh, this employee was not having it and uh, I did not persist at all. I just spent a little bit of time digging. I was able to find a few books, nothing crazy, but first we got a Firestorm number three. First appearance of Killer Frost. This is actually pretty beat up. This is in the VG range and I think this worked out to like 12 bucks which is probably what it's worth um not really an expensive book by any means next we got a copy of asm 110 john Rambita cover first appearance of the gibbon again probably in the vg range and i paid about what this is worth uh, i think i paid 14 15 bucks next a classic neil adams that i will always pick up if i find it at a good price this is batman number 200 anniversary issue here this is the first um neil adams art on the batman series so uh, i thought this was a pretty decent price i think this was like 32 bucks something like that so i thought that was worth grabbing at that price and finally this one i was surprised i mean he the other prices were so high i thought and then this one i was surprised that it was as low as it was it's really beat up low grade copy but we've got star wars 42 First comic book appearance of Boba Fett. Always a highly sought after book. Um, you know, pretty expensive, especially in high grade. This was like 36 bucks. It's a VG copy. Like I said, it's beat up. Um, but I thought that was actually a pretty solid deal, even in the uh, low grade. So happy with those. Next, let's go with how many books? A handful of books I grabbed from. A shop I'm sure I've mentioned many times before. This is Greenbush Out of Print Comics in Greenbush, which is right outside of Albany. Um, this is a shop that's uh, a little bit different. They don't do current issues at all, not that I'm aware of. Um, he's He has one of his customers, has a whole consignment area that sells a lot of books. And this is just a flat out, I mean, it's just boxes that are completely, some of it's organized. Um, he's got tables and everything on the top on the actual tables is organized and priced out. Um, and then there's, a ton of boxes underneath. I mean, 
dozens and dozens and dozens of long boxes and you're just welcome to dig through it and it's completely unorganized you have no idea what you're going to find and you've got to spend some you got to put some work in to find things but uh i was able to find a few books there we've got Catwoman number 50 i just like this cover this is uh of course the michelle pfeiffer from the batman returns Catwoman, which i love that's the uh series i grew up with this is david i'm gonna totally butcher the last name soza soza maka soza maka Anyways, variant cover. Uh, I think this was a couple of bucks near mint range. He usually sells the variant covers at like half of cover, a cover price, something like that. Um, I couldn't really pin down the price on this. I found this all over the place. Some people were selling it for five bucks, but most people seem to be selling it for 20 to 25. So I don't know. I thought it was a cool cover. So I grabbed it and I know that artist has been pretty popular. We have got a few copies of Spectacular Spider-Man. We've got number 69, which I think is the second appearance of Cloak and Dagger. Uh, this is pretty sharp, probably in the VF near mint range. Then I grabbed these classic Sabretooth covers, 116. Not in uh, as great a shape. This is the first full appearance of Foreigner. I guess speculation he'll appear in the Craven movie. I always just dug this. It's a rich uh, buckler cover. Um, I didn't even know it had any spec tied to it till he looked it up. Uh, but he's always pretty affordable. So I think this was like four bucks. It's probably more like a fine, very fine range. But decent price on that. I just always dug that cover along with this one, 119. New Sand copy, again, just a cool Rich Buckler Sabretooth cover. I was always a fan of uh, Spider-Man and Wolverine growing up were my two favorites. So, of course, I love when you get, uh, you know, anything from the Wolverine X-Men universe crossing over into Spidey. All right, next we have got a copy of uh, Incredible Hulk 105. This is first appearance of uh, The Missing Link. Um, it gave me a great deal on this. It's got a coupon cutout of the back. It's... It's uh, it's one of the late pages. It doesn't affect the story. It looks like it's probably a mid-grade book, but it just had that coupon cut out, so it's incomplete. So he gave it to me for a buck, which I was not going to pass up. This isn't a super crazy expensive book, but still, a dollar, uh, I thought was <laughs> a great deal, so I wasn't leaving that there. Next, we have got just one of those classic um, Bronze Age covers. This is Captain America 230, classic Hulk uh, Captain America battle cover here. This is, I think this is Ron Wilson uh, and Bob Layton on this cover from 1979. This is a really sharp copy. Uh, I put it down as kind of VF near mint, maybe closer to near mint. So um, yeah, really happy to find that. That's one of those ones I think often get skipped, but it goes for a pretty, uh, pretty penny in high grade. So nice pickup there. And finally, this is a beat up copy. Uh, I probably got this for about what it's worth, but we have got Tales to Astonish number 45. Probably in a good range. Second appearance of the Wasp. This is Jack Kirby from 1963. Again, it's in the good range, but it's complete. I think it was like 20 bucks, something like that. So I was happy to grab that. All right. And I think the last... Yeah, I think all of these are from the same shop. This... I'm drawing a blank. I think this is in Rochester. Uh, it's called Wonderland Comics. I got some good books there last year. Uh, really nice shop. He has a lot of good keys on the wall. Um, again, like so many places, some is overpriced, I think, and some is priced super fair. And he's willing to bundle stuff up. He's willing to give you a discount if you are uh, bundling stuff up. Oh, you know what? Before I move on to those, I forgot I did grab this from Greenbush from the consigner. Uh, we have got... Vampirella number 113. This was just kind of tucked in a random magazine box. Uh, this is the final magazine. I think it's the first published. Uh, I think it moved over to Harris Publications, but it's also the final uh, magazine issue. So I got this for like 75 bucks, which I'm not sure how great a deal that was. It can be a very expensive book. It's probably in the VG fine range, but uh, I've been kind of getting into the the magazines as a, as the last year chasing down a lot of the eerie and creepy magazines and vampirella particularly the frank frazetta stuff and uh i saw this and i just thought it was a cool pickup so i thought 75 bucks probably okay i'm not really sure this book of course like everything expensive and high grade but i was happy to get that for my magazine collection all right now on to the books from wonderland so 
I think I grabbed a few more than this, but I'll just highlight these few. Uh, we've got two fisted tails, number 37. This is a John Severin cover from 1954, I believe. Um, not in the best of shape, probably in the good range. Uh, I think this worked out to like 23 bucks. I can't remember. I bundled everything together. So Next, we have got a copy of Amazing Spider-Man number 86. John Romita on this cover. This is uh, the debut of Black Widow's classic skin-tight black costume that we, of course, all love. This was, uh, again, VG range. I think it worked out to about 33 bucks, which I thought was a pretty fair price on this. This one's always uh, pretty sought after. Next, we have got an iconic Ditko cover. I love this one. I've been finding this quite a bit recently. Amazing Spider-Man number 33. It's got a bad split and shipping down there, but it presents pretty well. Uh, and I thought this was a good deal. This is 48 bucks, and I've got it at probably like a 3.0. It's, again, classic Ditko cover from 1966. It's funny, some of the lower grade stuff, they'll price, and I think it's like way underpriced, and then he'll have a stack of like higher grade spideys that i think are all way overpriced like any non-key issue that's in the vf vf plus range will have like 250 300 bucks something like that uh, and then books like this are less than 50 bucks for you know i see this going for 100 bucks in, in this range so i thought that was a great deal all right two books i am super excited about honestly this is the one i'm probably the most excited about in this haul i have been chasing this neil adams book for so long, I don't find it a lot at shops. And when I do find it, it's always like a hundred plus dollars that they want. Um, and man, he had just priced out some books and he has, um, he'll have like a short box that he's working on just kind of sitting out. And I happen to flip through it and this was in there. It's Batman 241. Just an awesome Neil Adams cover. Um, this, I think those, this is uh, the new logo on 241 here to change from what it said batman and robin so just a classic neil adams cover from 1972 can be really pricey this is a mid-grade copy which i am happy with and he had this at 16 bucks or it worked out to like 16 bucks which i thought was a great deal i mean this book usually is selling for way more than that at least when i find it in shop so i was psyched to find that finally i have had this in my hands three or four times over the past two years and it's always like they want I'll do it for 125. I'm like, I'm just not paying that for this book. So, anyways, love this cover. Uh, I just think it's awesome. I'm so excited. I finally got a copy of that. And then maybe even a little bit better, you know, uh, another Neil Adams book. I grabbed this last year. Finally got a copy of this in low grade at another shop out in New York. But the, he had this much better copy uh, at a really great price. It's Batman 222. Again, Neil Adams. This is the Beatles cover. Uh, the Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Heart, Hearts Club Band cover from uh, 1970. This one's probably in the fine, very fine range. Maybe VF minus. It's got a little bit of a tear up there, but it's a way better, way better copy than the one I got last year. And this worked out to, I think it was like 130 bucks, which uh, still expensive, but for this book, uh, I thought it was a great deal. This book is really pricey. I mean, I think I saw people listed nine O's at like six, seven hundred dollars. So uh, I just love the DC pop culture covers when they have like the Rat Pack. Of course, you get the Beatles here. So you get Neil Adams with the Beatles. Just absolutely love this. So super psyched to upgrade my personal copy. And finally, just a Golden Age book. These guys will occasionally have some Golden Age on the wall. And a lot of these shops I go to, when I find Golden Age, I find it to be priced pretty reasonably. I was surprised um, how much this was. This is uh, All-Star Comics number 27. This is the winter issue from 1945. Obviously not in the best of shape. Missing a chunk there, but the artwork's all in place. The book is complete. I put it in the good range. This worked out to uh, 139 bucks, which I thought was really cheap for a book this old um i feel like this is something if i saw it at an actual con they'd have it on the wall at like 300 bucks you know um maybe i'm off but <laughs> i looked up a few copies on ebay and i saw books sold for over 100 bucks that had like completely split spines so 
shock this i mean this is on the wall i'm sure it have been there a while there were a couple other golden age books up there but uh, i thought this was by far and away the best deal so anyways that is it for this haul guys i've got a few more hauls to do after this uh, i haven't been haven't had the time to hit places up as much as i've been traveling a ton for work so anyways if you're a fan of these videos guys do me a favor go down below hit the like button hit subscribe see y'all soon